Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. This is the night that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. He made the day, too, just in case you didn't know. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that the Spirit is expressing is not only in preparation, and not only in the area of a refreshing of the anointing, but a double portion of the anointing. There will be an anointing that will be released that will be aggressive. Very aggressive. And in this anointing that will be released, it will be aggressive. In other words, aggressive in the area where he's looking for those who are in pursuit of righteousness and those who are in pursuit of sanctification and those who are in pursuit of God's presence. And in that area, that means that you and I, right, because he's looking for individuals that are willing to protect the anointing. That means protecting God's presence. That's why the word says do not Grieve the Holy Spirit. Amen? Do not grieve him. Make no place for the devil. Or works of the flesh. The Bible says the works of the flesh. All the works of the flesh in Galatians 5 will make place for the devil. Sin, fornication, so forth. So in this, there's an area where he's saying... If you're a protector of my presence, I'll be a protector of you. See, there's too much compromise, too much complacency, too much flesh, too much soul. And not enough discerning of God's presence. Not enough protecting, not enough sensitivity to that. And I'm telling you, there's an anointing that's going to come that's going to be aggressive through God's people. But there's a place where you and I must become more sensitive. More discerning. More alert. More protective of God's presence. In your life. That's why the word talks about coarse jesting and gossip and slander and criticism. All those things will grieve the spirit. That's not protecting God's presence in your life. There are boundaries that God places in our life. There's a process of playing and having fun, and then there's a boundary where people go over. Now you've grieved the Spirit. Amen? There's a place of praise and worship. But in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Again, there's that area where you and I began to protect the presence of God. It's sacred. See, people don't look at God's presence as sacred. It's sacred. And if you begin to realize the sacredness of God's presence, you'll find more of God's presence in your life. He's looking for protectors of his presence. If you're a protector of his presence, I'm going to tell you what's going to begin to happen. The fullness of God will be manifested in you. That's what we're, we chase it. We're looking for. We want more. If you're an individual that wants more, then you're an individual that's going to protect God's presence. If you're an individual that's just looking to fulfill your own thought, flesh and soul, then you're not looking at protector of God's presence. You're an expressor of yourself and not him. Amen? Go to Ephesians 3. Oh, yes. Glory. 
Ephesians 3, verse 14. Let's speak it together. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father, to the who? The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be what? Strengthened with might through his Spirit in your inner man. That it means that you are bound to the Spirit. Amen? Bound to the Spirit. Not bound to the flesh, not bound to the soul, but bound to the Spirit. What is he saying? If you're bound to the Spirit, you're going to be strong in the Spirit. That Christ, the anointing of God, may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Again, he's he says, to the Father of our Savior, to the seen and the unseen eternal family. And he might grant us to be strengthened with the power by yoking our new man with the Holy Spirit. Amen? That Christ, the character of God, would take possession of all of our desires in our heart. Through your cooperation and fellowship and connection to him. And that we would become rooted and grounded in the presence of his love. Now I want to share something with you. That the, his presence, his love, releases knowledge. God's presence releases knowledge. It's to be understood and in exchange for our lives for the measure of the fullness <laughs> of God. Man, for me and you, our comprehension of God as creator, as God as communicator, and of, as God of power must become up to a place where we understand these things. So what he says, he says that he would, he is the God who's do, able to do far above all we could ever ask or think, right? By his power in us. How about the power of thought? As a man thinks, so he what? Is. I can tell you for myself, when the strong anointing was on my life in the beginning of my walk with the Lord, my thoughts were manifested. I would think something and somehow down, whatever, it would be manifested. It would blow me away. But that thought wasn't mine. It was his. See, so we're trying to get to the place where we have one voice. One voice in us, one leading voice. Every other voice must be pursued, pursued, crushed, destroyed, and removed. That's our responsibility. To destroy every other voice that comes against the voice of God. Amen? In Colossians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Fullness of God. In verse 19. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Let's speak it together for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. In who? Jesus. And by him to reconcile, by Jesus to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, 
having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed, that means there's cooperation necessary, you continue in the faith grounded and steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, became a minister. Again, it pleased the Father that in Jesus the Christ, all the fullness of God the Father should dwell. The fullness of God is exchanged on the cross to anyone willing to come to the cross and exchange their life for his. See, that exchange of life to life is constant for me and you. See, too many people fight for the life instead of exchange it. That's why the word the, tells us that we're to deny ourselves. Amen? That will never stop. And everything that you and I do and every decision we're going to make, everything is, should always be according to the law of the spirit of life. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Amen? No matter what it is. That's why it's important that we exchange our heart for his heart so that his desires are in us, not ours. Now, you will find as you go through stuff that there are desires that God is trying to say, give that to me. Give that to me. Give that to me. Give me some of your habits. Give me some of your traditions. Give me these things that you think are good for you when I'm telling you they're not good for me. Amen? Amen. Again, this is the reality to where we are to be protectors of the presence of God. That's why we're to protect our eyes and our ears. Amen. That's why there's to be protection. And I'm not saying that it can, you know, you're going to find stuff all over the place. But you don't pursue it. Amen. We're to pursue righteousness. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. Then what happens? All things are added. <laughs> See, that's one of the areas because people are now in a pursuit of righteousness. You and I should be living a pursuit of righteousness, sanctification, and his presence. But his presence is priority. We are in pursuit of those things. If you're not in pursuit of those things, something's not right. Amen? Oh, happy days. Colossians 2, while we're here, verse 8. Let's speak it. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead to your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trans trespasses, and having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was con contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or drink, or regarding festivals or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are shadow of things to come. But the substance is Christ, his presence, power, and truth. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility, 
worship of angels or false worship, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from who? God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to what? Religious regulations, rituals. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. Which all concern things which perish with using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have a, an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Powerful. Many drift according to the traditions of men and basic principles of the world. They put off Christ they put off Christ and put on carnality, missing the fullness of God. Why? As a person begins to drift from the presence of God, they're putting off Christ. Or they're not sensitive enough to protecting the presence of God in their lives. Amen? Romans 8. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 16. Fullness of God. We all want the fullness of God. Romans 8, 16. Is everybody there? Glory to God. Let's speak it. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Why? Because we're yoked. If you are bound in the Spirit, your new spirit man is bound to the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get it? So if your spirit man is bound to the Holy Spirit, the enemy is going to try to cause division, offense, Amen. He's going to try to cause something for you to react in the flesh, to grieve the spirit. He's going to try to cause something. Remember, react is the difference than respond. Responding to the spirit or reacting to the flesh, one or the other. He's trying to get the area where the spirit of God is grieved in our life. Some people have grieved the spirit and have lost them and don't even know it. Now, we live and have our being in God's presence, but there's a difference. Now, he never gives up on us, does he? No. He's always trying to get us to a place of full repentance. But see, some people are not discerning enough to realize that they've grieved the Spirit, and the Spirit is waiting for a repentance so that there's a washing of the blood because the blood goes before the Spirit. Amen? What does he say? Do not touch anything unclean. That means thought. That means word. That means eyes. That means ears. That means heart. Anything that is unclean will grieve the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? How about rebellion? Disobedience. That will grieve the Spirit. How about, listen, the enemy tries to bring division. When there's not unity, it grieves the spirit. Amen? All right, let's go a little further. It says again in verse 16, this, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then what? Heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed, again, you see that if, that means cooperation. If we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Wow. 
We are bound in the Spirit. We are joint heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If we endure our challenges, allowing an exchange of character to reach a level of no return. Everybody get it? A level of what? No return. We are not returning back to anything of old. I'll say that a little bit. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For cr the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Wow. Again, we are bound in the Spirit as joint heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we endure our challenges, amen, it's allowing an exchange of character to reach a level of no return to the fullness and desire of God. We are waiting for fulfillment of immortality, even though we have accessed it. Amen? You're now a born-again believer. You are immortal, but your flesh isn't. Hello. <laughs> We are still waiting for the redemption of this mortal body to become immortal. Does everybody get that? 1 John chapter 3. You may not feel immortal. <laughs> but as a man thinks, so he is. I had a vision this morning in prayer. And uh, it was a, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Um, because I, I saw God speak. And, and his, his voice went. And all of a sudden, his voice exploded. And it was like, you know, like fireworks. And his voice went more and more and more. Then it happened again and it happened again. And he said, I, I've, I've released my voice, my breath, my voice, That's why I created man. So that my voice could be heard everywhere. So we are the carriers of God's voice. <laughs> you were born again by the voice of God. <laughs> and when I saw this, I was, it was like uh, there was, a, there was a, a, an endless time. And I was brought to the scripture that my times are in your hands. See, he's trying to bring us to a place where we're really cutting loose of this place. Really cutting loose of all of its stuff so that we live a life of immortality, an attitude of immortality, a 
mode of immortality. We are eternal. It doesn't make us gods. It makes us children of him. Amen? We can't again allow the mirror to dictate, your emotions to dictate, your failures to dictate, or your successes to dictate who you are. That's what he says who you are. <laughs> and too many people fall from that. See, they're still caught up in their successes, failures, their mistakes. Oh, man, I'll never. Oh, uh -huh. Even their sicknesses. <laughs> they're still, the enemy is still utilizing that to identify you. And God is trying to break us out from all of these things. Why? Because he's trying to pour out a strong, aggressive anointing. But we must be pursuers of righteousness, amen, of his presence, and sanctification. Glory. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3. Is everybody okay? Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God, therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. In this, it's, he's saying, you can't comprehend it. You're not going to understand it. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. We really don't know what he looks like, except for what we've been told. Somebody understand that? We've been told things so that we can understand things. But in the spirit realm on the other side, believe me, things are different. Amen? That's why many people have a visitation of pure light. Well, you can't tell what somebody looks like in pure light. You know what I'm saying? It's just pure light. <laughs> but pure love. Now we know what Jesus is going to look like when he comes back on, you know, with fiery eyes and whatever. We've seen Jesus in the flesh. Amen. But when we see the fullness of God Almighty, see, we can't see him like that now. We'd be tore, ripped apart. Because we still carry the fallen nature. Which got, it's offensive to God. The flesh is offensive to God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Again, verse 2, Beloved, now we are children of God, that, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he what? He <coughs> is. <sighs> Praise God. Got loosed. <laughs> Verse 3. Yes. And everyone who has this what? This hope. In him what? Purifies himself just as he is pure. Now, how are you going to have this hope without understanding it? In other words, you know this is an expectation that is beyond comprehension. That's a hope. Amen? Because hope is faith in the future. In other words, you're not going to be the same even though you're not the same right now. Thank God. Jeez. You don't have to sleep no more. <laughs> Think about that. You won't miss nothing. <laughs> Verse 4, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. So whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him or known him or understood him. Whoever abides in him does not sin, whether whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested 
that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Again, when he's revealed, we shall be like him. See him as he is. This hope purifies us because he is pure. Again, it goes back to as a man thinks, so he is. So no matter what you're going through, thank God you can always, man, I can't wait. I'm getting out of here. None of this really matters. It's just temporary. My focus, number one focus, is God's presence and not grieving it. Maintaining God's presence. See, you can do all kinds of work without God's presence and think you still got God's presence. For uh, Second Peter chapter one. Second Pete one. Verse two. Oh, here we go again. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power, which is his divine presence, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these precious promises, so you must believe, receive and execute through these promises you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss what promises the promises that you and I just talked about does everybody get it what promises you're immortal your flesh isn't amen in fact in fact your flesh hates immortality it loves this place it loves sin, hates God's presence. So one of the things we've got to continue to do if, when we are protecting the presence of God, your flesh is now submissive. <laughs> Amen? You're no longer a reactor, you're a responder. And that's where God, the, Jesus is manifested through your flesh then. It works. Amen? Knowledge of the creator of all things, ruler of heaven, of the heavenly family and his Christ, is the extension of himself to be understood by those taken from humanity as mortals into immortality. Again, this is a partaking by believing, receiving, and executing. The covenant promises allowing us to access and partake of the divine nature and power of God Almighty. What we're doing is we are always rejecting the human nature of the flesh and the ability to escape selfish ambitions of corruption in this world that promotes lust. I want to go back again to as a man thinks, so he is. So that's why your thought pattern must be under control. Every voice is what influences you to do something. You're not influenced. Even an emotion is influenced by a voice. You may call it a feeling, but it's still a voice. Well, I feel this. Well, you meant, in other words, you were told that. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Again, this is the lack of the area. If you are become more sensitive to maintaining the presence of God in your life, you will find that you'll be more discerning of everything else.
1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. That means selfish. <laughs> Your human nature has still got control over you. You're still in the flesh. You're still in the soul. You're not in the spirit. You're not discerning the presence of God, and you're not protecting the presence of God in your life. For where there are envy, strife, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like what? Mere men. Behaving like mere men. Carnality is a lower form of humanity. <laughs> Does everybody get it? Carnality is a lower form of humanity. Behaving like mere men. For when one says, I'm, a Paul, I'm Paul, and the other says, I'm Apollos, and are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he shall, will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles that temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Wow. Behaving like mere men, again, carnality is a lower form of humanity. With measured limitations. It has measured limitations of existence. We are no longer from beneath, we are from above. Born of the eternal realm of creation. I'm going to say this again. We are born of the eternal realm of creation. Not just the spiritual realm of the unseen. We are born of the eternal realm of creation, not the spiritual realm of the unseen. That's different. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. The spiritual realm of the unseen does not have dominion over us. We are born of the eternal realm. It is forever and ever and ever. The spiritual realm of the unseen will go away and disappear one day. It will be destroyed, but the eternal realm of God Almighty will be forever and ever and ever. Again, that's where the demons hang out. They will be destroyed, cooked. We are God's building, the temple. And we are carriers of his presence, power, truth, and his voice. To turn mortals into immortality individuals, amen, by the ministry of reconciliation, bringing them to Christ. This is what the fullness of God is for. Amen? Again, if we want more, you must desire more. If you don't have a desire, you need to ask for more. Amen? We must be in a constant pursuit of righteousness, a constant pursuit of sanctification, and a constant pursuit of His presence, always protecting it. Romans 9. Aggressive anointing is coming. 
I love aggressive anointing. Verse 1, I tell the truth in Christ, I am not lying, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. That I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were a curse from Christ for my brother, my countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God and the promises, of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who was over all the eternal blessed God. Almighty. Amen. But it is not that the word of God has taken effect, for they are not all Israel or all Israel or who are Israel, nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. And Isaac, your seed, shall be called. That is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. So even God himself says these are the children of the flesh. Again, to be carnal is a lower form of humanity. To be children of God is a higher level. It doesn't make us better, just higher level. What? More conscience, more understanding of the eternal things. But the children of the promise are counted as the seed. And this is the word of promise. At this time I come, I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. So we see the difference between the children of the flesh and the children of God. Galatians 5. Fullness of God. Price to pay. You have to keep your shovel clean so you can use it again. Keep it sharp. <laughs> Galatians 5.22. Ah, we might as well start it somewhere. Let's start at 16. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so you don't do the things that you wish or that you desire. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. If you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything like it of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That means control over your flesh. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. Self-control. Romans 13. Romans 13, fullness of God. We want the fullness of God. We must be pursuers of what? God's presence, God's righteousness, and his sanctification. So in this, we must be protectors of his presence. In verse 8, He says, Oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. <clears throat> For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, 
are all summed up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilled what? In the law. Hallelujah. Uh, and where am I? And do this knowing that, oh, I'm sorry. And verse 11, and do this knowing the time and that now was what? High time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Why? Because you will grieve the Spirit to fulfill its love. No provision for the flesh. Ephesians 5. The fullness of God. You know, one of the things we looking out for one another is protecting each other from the voice of the stranger. If you're protecting each other from the voice of the stranger, then we should be protecting each other from offending the presence of God, grieving the Spirit. Verse 1, Ephesians 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. Why? These are things that will grieve the spirit. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding now what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them, expose them, expose them. Listen, if you are in pursuit of God's righteousness, and you are in pursuit of God's presence, and God's sanctification, you are always exposing darkness in your life. You don't have to expose it in anyone else's. Amen? You are always exposing it in your life. Why? Because you're a protector of God's presence. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let's go to Psalm 17. Glory. fullness of God. <laughs> Psalm 17, is everybody there? Verse 13. Let's speak it together. Arise, O Lord, confront him. Cast them down. Deliver my life from the wicked with your sword. With your hand from men, O Lord. From men of the world who have their portion in this life. And whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children. And leave the rest of their possession for their babes. Now, understand he's asking for assistance. 
but he's also edifying himself and bringing him to the place of, you know what, this is how the world lives. But that's not how I live. Look what he finishes off with. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake in your what? Likeness. Remember, he is in pursuit of the presence of God. He's in pursuit of righteousness. He's in pursuit of sanctification. He knows the end result that he is going to be in his likeness. Knowing these things brings a purification to our soul. We want the fullness of God, but we must be in pursuit. We must be protectors of the presence of God and the anointing of God in your life. Amen. We must be able to discern and be sensitive to these things. There's an aggressive anointing getting ready to be released here shortly, and we don't want to miss it. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. And Lord, we repent for any area that we have offended you or grieved your spirit in any way whatsoever, through our eyes, ears, or heart, or false agreements, or anything that we've touched that was unclean, willing or unknowingly. Outbursts of wrath, reactions and not responses, offenses. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord. Wash us with the blood of Christ. Heal us with the stripes of Jesus. And reconnect us and position us that we may walk in the fullness of Christ in pursuit of your righteousness, of your presence, and of your sanctification. That we may be sons and daughters that please you in preparation to receive an aggressive anointing in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.